Kids growing up and asserting their independence is a pretty normal part of life. Less normal is when they also assert the independence of their own sovereign empire. Dom Pedro de Alcântara, Francisco, Antonio, João Carlos, Xavier, de Paula, Miguel, Rafael, Joaquim, José, Gonzaga, Pascual, Cipriano, Serafim, de Braganza e Barbon, or Pedro for short, spent only his youngest years in Portugal because when he was nine, Napoleon had set his sights on Lisbon, and the royal family was taking no chances with a man who had so far, to grossly oversimplify, declared war on all of Europe and won four times. And so they packed their things and moved to Brazil, and yes, I'm finally acknowledging the existence of South America and it only took over two years and 22 videos. Sorry, Africa, you were this close. Growing up, Pedro actually got along well with his family, except for his mother, whom he lovingly called, quote, they gave him a fine education, but he was too hyperactive to make good use of it on his own and too spoiled to be forced to. But for some reason, he was really good at making other people calm down. Portugal and Brazil were both in the midst of liberal revolutions, and King João had to return to the mainland to go sign a constitution. But before he left, he told his son, Hey, Brazil's probably gonna revolt soon. Better you take charge of it than someone else. Sure enough, one of the generals in Brazil staged a mutiny and came out with an army and a list of demands. But he hadn't counted on the fact that Pedro was already on the liberal side. He'd guaranteed property rights, really revolutionaries from prison, and when the army came to his door, he stepped out and negotiated a compromise. Meanwhile, the Portuguese parliament, which had recently called itself back into existence after a good century, decided that Brazil's time as a united kingdom was done, and it was pretty much going to be a colony again. As soon as he got the news, Pedro hopped on his horse and pulled a Braveheart, crying, By my blood, we shall have independence or death, but hopefully independence. As wars go, it wasn't that exciting. Brazil bought ships and a few officers from Britain and chased off the Portuguese, but Portugal was only half the problem. A few territories weren't totally on board with the whole independence thing. The Secretary of State got fired for misconduct and started shouting conspiracy theories about Pedro being a dirty Portuguese traitor, so Pedro dissolved the assembly that was going to write the constitution and put a new group in charge. Then more territories broke off and declared independence from Brazil, but luckily for Pedro, they didn't have the backing of one of the most powerful empires on the planet. So Pedro finally gets his ducks in a row and his dad lets go of Brazil. Less than a year later, old João pegged out, and even though he had just declared war against Portugal, Pedro was officially its new king. To which he said, Oh, no thank you, no. As hilarious as it would have been for him to keep the job, he handed the crown over to his daughter on the one small condition that she tie up any hereditary loose ends and marry her uncle, because that would completely separate Portuguese and Brazilian interests. Unfortunately, much as he would have liked to think about Portuguese affairs, he had to worry about Uruguay declaring independence, which, as you might guess, was a war that didn't work out in Brazil's favor. Then his wife died, he broke up with his mistress, he couldn't get abolitionist policy passed through the General Assembly, and no matter what he did, he grew less and less popular. Meanwhile, his daughter had been ousted by his brother, son-in-law to be, who wanted to bring back absolute monarchy to Portugal. Well, one night when the streets were filled with protesters and his army and personal guard abandoned him, Pedro decided, fine, you know what? I'm going back to Portugal to help my daughter defeat her treacherous regent. Anyway, I'm leaving my five-year-old son in charge under the care of a triumvirate of regents who will definitely not step over him and fight each other for power. Also, his guardian is the guy who has a track record of exiling political enemies and slandering me relentlessly. Take care. A few months later, Pedro shows up on the shores of Portugal with a small army of liberal allies who've all sworn not to shave until the queen is restored to power, and as soon as they land, they get besieged for over a year. Around the time the siege finally ends, a messenger comes from Brazil saying, Hey, uh, do you want to come back and at least be regent for your son? Now while this sounds like a great deal, Pedro figured that this was a way for certain restorationists to gain power, and chances were the whole empire didn't just change its mind overnight. So, ever the constitutionalist, he decided that he'd go back, but only if Parliament sent him an official petition. Well, not too much later, the Liberal Army captures Lisbon and are stamping out the rest of the absolutist forces, razors in hand, when all of a sudden, the Prince of Spain, who just so happens to be taking power from his niece, decides to team up with Pedro's brother, and the war starts all over again. But after another year, Pedro and his allies prevail. And so the beard got trimmed just in time to make a pretty corpse because he died four months later at the ripe old age of 35. Fun fact, in case you hadn't heard, that picture of the palace on fire was real. It's been the National Museum of Brazil since 1892, and 90% of everything in it was destroyed or severely damaged. There are, however, reconstruction efforts going on. If you've ever been and taken pictures, please consider uploading them to Wikimedia. I've put some links in the description. Okay, have a nice day.